While you read the paper, there are a number of questions that I'd like you to think about and uh, to consider uh, when you're evaluating the literature in general and specifically for this assignment. So when we think about looking at a study, whether it was a cross-sectional study or a longitudinal study or any of the other designs, there's always the starting point, which is who is being studied. So in this exercise, the first question I would like you to evaluate is uh, what was the study population and how is it selected? So that's the very first thing that you're going to think about and I think this is the starting point really for any study critique that you'll ever be doing in, in, in looking at published literature. The next point that I'd like you to think about is what was the time frame in assessing the relationship between the exposure and the outcome? So what is that relationship over time between the exposure and outcome? And again, that's a generic question. It might be pretty obvious in this case, hopefully, to will be obvious to all of you. Uh, but in general, this is a very important point to think about. The third point I'd like you to think about is what was the um, exposure of interest, or in this case, perhaps multiple exposures of interest, and how were they measured? When you think about that, you should also think about what implications the measurement has for the quality of the data that were collected in the study and how this might influence the results of the study. The next thing to think about is the outcomes of interest. So in this study, where we're looking at vestibular function and balance, how is it measured in this study? And once again, think about the quality of that measurement. Was it measured consistently? How is it coded? How is it recorded? Is it graded? What are the different dimensions of the outcome? and how is it operationalized in this study. Next, I would like you to think about the results of the study. So what was the big picture? What did the authors come away with from the study? So starting with the, uh, th their final answer, and how would you interpret it? What was the way they expressed the result? What measure of association did they show? And how do you interpret that main result? So that's the next point to consider. Moving from there, we want to think about whether or not the observed result may have been due to something that, other than a causal association between heavy metals and balance. So did the authors consider the presence of confounding? And if they did, what potential confounders did they consider in their analysis? You should also think about how they dealt with those confounders. So which confounders did they consider? And in thinking about that, Think about whether this is a reasonable set of confounders. Do you think that the way they measured the confounders was appropriate? And then we're going to move on and think about what they did to take account of the potential confounding. Do you think it was adequate? Do you think that they did a good job in controlling confounding to come up with a reasonable answer with regards to the association between the heavy metals exposures and the outcome of uh, balance and vestibular dysfunction? The next thing that I'll ask you to look at is uh, did the authors in any way evaluate the rule of chance in their result? If they did, what did they do? How did they evaluate the play of chance? So is there a pro possibility that the results they observed were non-causal, but not due to bias, but rather just due to random variability? And if they did assess that, what measures did they use? How did they evaluate the rule of chance in this study? The next thing to think about is I'd like you to think about whether or not the authors considered the possibility that the impact of having different levels of the heavy metals is associated with a different impact on balance in different subgroups of the population. So did the authors evaluate whether the association differed across different categories of subjects in the study? For example, uh, did they think about the difference between older subjects and younger subjects or any other subgroups that they looked at? Sometimes we call this effect modification. So was the effect that they observed for the association the same or did it differ across subgroups? And if so, what subgroups did they look at and how did they express the results of that evaluation? Now, uh, finally, I would like you to Think about the paper after you've gone through all of these steps, taking all of the evidence that you've accrued based on uh, thinking about the exposures and the outcomes and the way the authors dealt with confounding and bias and chance and the quality of their measures, and think about the answer to this question. On a scale of 1 to 10, 
What is your degree of agreement with the assertion that exposure to lead and or cadmium causes an increased risk of developing problems with balance and vestibular disturbance? Now, when you go through this exercise, I want you to, to base your answer on your understanding of sound epidemiologic principles that you've been learning throughout this class. I'll be back to discuss the results of, of uh, your um, review of this paper uh, after the, uh, this part of the course is over. Thank you very much for listening today.